This is your complete guide to condo fees in Toronto, so let's go. Hey, it's Amanda here with the Moving to Toronto team. If you're thinking about moving to Toronto or the surrounding suburbs, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so that you're the first to know about the current market here in Toronto. We love helping people just like you. So whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, reach out to us. All of our contact information is down below. So today we're going to be diving into a topic that is crucial for anyone considering buying a condo in the city, condo maintenance fees. So whether you're looking at a new built or a resale unit, these fees are something that you'll need to budget for. So let's break down exactly what they are and why they matter. Condo maintenance fees, sometimes called common expense fees, are payments that every condo owner must make. These fees go towards the upkeep and the maintenance of the building's common elements, which include everything from hallways and elevators to the amenities like the outdoor terraces, the fitness centers, and swimming pools. But why do these fees exist? Well, when you buy a condo, you own your individual unit, but you also share ownership of the building's common areas. These fees ensure that everything is kept in top shape, making your living experience more enjoyable, and you're maintaining the building's value over time. Think of these fees as your contribution to the building's upkeep. It covers everything from cleaning services to landscaping and even the salaries of the condo management team. But here's the thing, maintenance fees can vary widely depending on the building and the amenities that are offered. So when you're shopping for a condo, it's essential to factor in these costs into your budget. Now let's take a look at how these fees are calculated. Ultimately, they're calculated based on your unit's proportional share within the condo complex. The answer lies in your condo's governing documents, particularly the condo corporation's declaration. For example, imagine that your condo corporation has a monthly budget of $25,000. If your unit is responsible for 5% of the budget, you'll be paying $125 each month. It's all about the proportionate contribution. And if you only have the annual budget, just multiply by your unit's share and divide by 12 to get your monthly fee. So who decides how much you pay? That is the condo corporation's board of directors. These are fellow condo owners who work on behalf of the entire community. They base their decisions on the Condominium Act and the governing documents of the condo. Their main goal is to promote a healthy and well-maintained community for everyone. Now let's talk a little bit about the reserve fund. A reserve fund is like a savings account for the entire condo building. It is managed by the Condominium Corporation and this fund is exclusively used for major repairs and replacements of the common areas. Think of it kind of like an emergency fund for big ticket items. We're talking about roof repairs or replacements, elevator maintenance, window upgrades, and replacing heating or water tanks. Now, every month when you pay your maintenance fees, a portion of that money goes straight into this reserve fund. It's a way to ensure that when something needs fixing, the money is already there without requiring a special assessment or unexpected fees for the unit owners. So you might be wondering, how do we know there is enough money in the fund? That's where the Condominium Act comes in. The Act mandates that every condo corporation must conduct what is called a reserve fund study. This study is a detailed assessment that predicts the costs of future repairs and it also ensures there's enough money saved up to cover these costs. The first reserve fund study happens in the very first year the condo is registered and then it must be updated every three years. This regular update is crucial because it helps the condo board plan ahead and adjust contributions if needed. So what happens if the reverse fund isn't up to par? Well, the condo board has to take action. 
After receiving the reserve fund study, the board has 120 days to review it and come up with a plan. If they find the reserve fund is lacking, they might propose an increase in the contributions. Transparency here is key. The condo board must notify all unit owners within 15 days of any proposed changes. This notice will include a summary of the reserve fund study, details of the proposed plan for future funding, and an explanation on how the plan differs from the current reserve fund situation. This step ensures that everyone is on the same page and understands how their money is being managed. So why should you care about all of this? A healthy reserve fund is a sign of a well-maintained condo. It means that the building is prepared for any unexpected repairs, which can protect your investment and prevent surprise costs down the line. If you're considering buying a condo in Toronto, asking about the reserve fund should be high on your list. Also, be aware of the special assessments. A special assessment is a one-time extra charge added to condo owners' maintenance fees when the reserve fund is insufficient for unexpected repairs or any legal costs. It is collected monthly and calculated based on each owner's share. When buying a resale condo, a status certificate will reveal any existing special assessments or potential fee increases, which your lawyer will review to ensure the reserve fund is adequately funded and to avoid future financial surprises. Lastly, you might be thinking, how do maintenance fees increase? Maintenance fees for condos typically increase each year due to inflation, budget changes, or insufficient reserve funds. In the first year of operation, after the condo board takes over from the developer, fees may rise more sharply to address any previous overlooked expenses. The increase in fees is determined by the condo corporation's annual budget, which covers operating expenses and reserve fund contributions. While there is no set formula for these increases, purchasing a condo in a financially healthy corporation usually means that fees hikes will align with inflation rates. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it useful. If you did like today's video, hit that like button, tap that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. And if you're thinking about moving to Toronto or the surrounding suburbs, go ahead, give us a call, text, or email. All of our contact information is down below. And if you want to see videos like this one, check out this one next. And until next time, guys, see you around the city and God bless.